Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Over the last couple of weeks, I've fallen completely in love with product videos. And today is no exception. Today I'm also making a tutorial on how to make a awesome product video. Just have a look at this one. I'm so happy with this one. Thank you so much to Austin Paul for inspiring me to make another one. I think it's awesome to see that you actually can do this without having those expensive lights that a lot of people are using. Godox, 100 bucks. The Rory light, 50 bucks. If I may say so myself, I think this video looks pretty professional. And my brother told me today that he thought this was my best work so far and I may agree with him. So now it's time to tell you how I was planning this. First, I had a look at Austin Paul's YouTube channel where he was making this video with a whiskey bottle. I'm not a fan of whiskey, so I rather make a video with the apple juice. And that's when I went to the local grocery store and they had this really cool bottle and I thought it would be cool to make one out of the apple juice from Egegor. I have no relation to Egegor or the company, but I thought the bottle looked cool, so that's why I'm using it. After buying the apple juice, I had to plan the scenes and the shots, and even though I didn't know exactly how I wanted the end product to be, I knew that I wanted a black background, I knew that I wanted the bottle to be lit up just like in this video, and the way I did that was by having this Rory light right behind the bottle the whole time, which made it light up just like you saw in the video. The next thing I wanted to do was to have this one to make the reflections and make it a really cool look. And luckily I had one at home so I didn't have to buy one. And I think that made the video so much cooler, especially in the scene where my hand is taking the glass, where you see the uh, reflection of my hand and a bottle in the glass. And I, I, yeah, I just loved it. So after preparing the black bed sheet on the wall and a black bed sheet underneath the glass, it was time to prepare the lights. And the way I did that was by using the Godox. I will show you a shot of this one afterwards, but now I'm using it so I can't film it. But what I did was to make a little hole in with a lot of tape. And that made it possible for me to have the light focus on a small part of the bottle from the side, from the left so the bottle was standing here and the light came from here and as i said earlier i had this one behind so this was the main light actually because it was the most important one lighting up the bottle at first i was planning on using the last shot for the intro but then i decided i want the intro to be the rolling bottle but the first scene i shot was the last one in this video and then I was just having the bottle standing here and I was trying out the 4K cropping with the camera, which is a great function. You can just decide how, where you want it to start and then it just zooms in. But still, I didn't find it like really well and really good. So I decided to make it with slow motion. I turned my camera on to 180 frames per second and then I just put the bottle here the camera on the tripod and then I was spraying water with this one making the rain effect which I thought was really cool and I also love the effect with the water drops on the bottle and I think that's such a cool effect it makes it fresher and I think that's something you should consider if you're making some beverage uh, product video of any kind. So the next shot that I did was the spinning of the bottle. And at first I thought I didn't have anything to spin it on and I didn't know how to do it. And then I remembered this spinner, which is kind of simple. But what I did was to just put a bottle on top of it. And then I just did like this. And as you can see in the video, I'm not shooting the whole bottle. So I could have my hand on the top and just spin it slowly. And I thought it turned out pretty cool. In every shot of this video, I'm having this one 
either underneath or behind. So during the spinning, I also had this light behind the bottle. The next thing I wanted to do was to build up to the opening scene of the bottle. I put the camera on the tripod and then I just pulled the ceiling and opened up the bottle. And I thought it looked kind of cinematic, dramatic while, while doing it. And I also loved the light coming from here, which made it yeah, so something different and I, th I thought it was pretty cool. For the next shot, I put this one underneath the empty glass and then I was having the camera on a tripod. I had this light just over and then I started pouring from the bottle. And the next shot was the one where I put apple juice into the glass, but I only filmed the bottom of the glass and I thought this looked really clean, really smooth and that's probably my favorite of this video because it looked so sharp. So the lights stayed mainly the same during all the shots with me pouring the apple juice into the glass. And I finished it off with the scene where you saw that the glass was almost full. What I thought was really cool was when I put the light just like this because it lit up the background right here. And it also made it really cool for the glass with the apple juice standing in front of it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have the shot where I grabbed the glass with apple juice but I thought it would be cool like cool storytelling if we had this story of opening the bottle pouring it down to the glass and then having a drink I wasn't really planning on making the reflection shot but then I saw it afterwards and I thought it looked really cool and I think it's really cool how some coincidences can just make the video so much cooler and that's mainly how I shot the scenes and it's not it was not really difficult I had the camera on the tripod the whole time and I think the most important part was the lights the only lights that were on during the shots were this one and the Godox I turned off the lights in the room and that made it possible for me to just darken the black background afterwards and it looks like there's no background at all and I love that look and I think that was what I was going for from the beginning and I was really nervous beforehand because I didn't know if it would work. I was nervous but I was excited and I think that's the cool part about doing this and especially on low budget because you don't know beforehand if it's gonna work and then you just have this amazing feeling when it actually works so that's really cool. Going into Final Cut Pro I just made a sequence of the shots. The first thing I wanted to check out was if the lights were good, if I could highlight the bottle and take down the shadows and I was so happy when it worked because it made me uh, certain that I could make a cool video. After putting the shots together I, it was mainly about finding the right music, finding a, the right sound effects and there was also some places as you can see here where the lights were sh reflecting into the bottle and I didn't like that so I just put on a graduated mask and I think that looked good. So I used the graduated mask sometimes just to take out some of the things that didn't fit into the video. Mm, sometimes the edges of the glass here it was showing and I didn't like it so I just put on the graduated mask and it was gone. So the graduated mask actually helped me a lot in this one and I think it's a good tool to use if you want something to be uh, taken away from your shot. I actually used it also in the last one with the Dumblet chocolate, I can show you here. I used it here so I didn't have to zoom in on the stop motion photos that I used in the intro. Most of the shots in this video was without motion but there was a couple of exceptions. First one was the one where I panned into the top of the bottle, just like you see here. And the other one was the rotating shot with the full glass. As you can see, the camera was already on rotation, but I edited the rotation motion in uh, post-editing in Final Cut Pro. So what I did was put on a keyframe on the scale and a keyframe on the rotation then I just made the scale value and the rotation value bigger in the end of the shot. 
now it was time to just make the last color grades, making the colors a little more fresh. As you can see here, this was the color of the bottle before grading and then afterwards it was so much cooler. I thought it was fresher. And after color grading and just playing around with the video, I was done and I was happy. And that's how the video was made. Please don't hesitate on asking me questions. If you have any, follow me on Instagram, Christian Varvik with two A's and uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video remember to subscribe to my channel and until next time